Hello and welcome to the Jonas.net. My name is Donald Jonas. Today I'm going to start my first tutorial in a three-part video tutorial series on setting up Samba 4 as an Active Directory Domain Controller and on that same server we're going to be running DNS and DHCP. The server we're going to be using is Ubuntu 14.04, the 64-bit edition LTS. You can download the ISO image of that from Ubuntu.com and we're going to build our server in VirtualBox. Let's begin. So we're going to go ahead and create a virtual machine. Go ahead and give it a name. Choose type and version. Allocate some memory to this virtualization. Take in mostly defaults here, dynamically allocated for the uh, hard drive. And I'm going to choose a over 100 gigabyte of space. I'm not actually committing to this because it's not fixed, it's dynamically allocated. This is just what the virtualization could expand to. Uh, otherwise, it's just going to be a small fraction of this, which is a good way of doing virt virtual machines. That way, it doesn't eat up a lot of real estate on your hard drive. So create settings, make it quick, quick changes here under processor. Go ahead and we're going to give it two CPUs, uh, display, kick it up to 128 megabytes, and then our network, we're just going to set it to bridged so it's available on the network. Go ahead and click on start, click the folder to the right, choose your ISO image that you've downloaded, and we're going to start the installation process. On the installation wizard, I'm going to take mostly the defaults. I will pause the recording of this tutorial periodically throughout the installation wizard as a time saving measure, but it will always be recording during the required prompts. It's pretty much just a default here. Now the installation wizard is asking for a host name. I put the entire tutorial on the Jonas.net, my website. And we're going to follow along through all three tutorial videos. So I have this set up as DCSRV. You can call yours whatever you'd like. Full name, the new user. I'm just going to call him DC Admin. And the same thing for the account. Go ahead and apply a password. Encrypt your home directory. I'm going to choose no. Encrypting your home directory or the hard drive is a good idea. Maybe not for a server, but for definitely your desktop or your laptop to make sure it's safe and your data is encrypted. Choose your time zone. Now we're going to set up the partitions on the hard drive. I'm just going to keep this simple. Ubuntu does a very good job at uh, using the guided use entire disk option. It's using the virtual box hard disk. And it's just going to set up an ext4 on a swap. Pretty straightforward. Write the changes to disks. Now the installation wizard is asking if you have a proxy server in your network to go ahead and put your uh, user password and port in order to access through the proxy server. Uh, there's no proxy server on this tutorial, so I'm just going to go ahead and click continue and move past this. How do you want to manage upgrades in the system? I'm going to choose no automatic updates. Updates is something that you can do. Well, I like to do them manually myself just to make sure that they're applicable to the software I've installed on my server. That, once again, is a personal preference. For this tutorial, we're just going to choose Open SSH Server. If we need more software, we can install it as needed. Install the Grub boot loader to the master boot record and choose Yes. And this nearly completes the installation. We're going to go ahead and we're going to reboot the server here. Let's 
but if I continue, this server we're setting up does not have a graphical interface. So I'm going to install a GUI, a graphical user interface called LXDE. It's a really good desktop. It's a lightweight desktop. I think it complements this environment nicely. Go ahead and stop, uh, log into the server with the local account we had set up earlier. And type in sudo sudo password passswd root. This will allow us to apply a password to the super user root. Type in your password for the local account we had created earlier. And go ahead and create your root password. And type in su to elevate yourself to a root at super user. And type in the newly created root password. And let's run the app get update command. This will test the server out to the internet, have a check in with the default repositories that were created during the installation process. For this entire tutorial series, I'm just going to use the default repositories. Let's go ahead and do app get install lxde. And I'm going to choose y for yes and this will take a few minutes to uh, download and install. Of course, it varies upon your uh, network speed. I'm going to pause the recording while this is taking place, and I'll be right back. The LXDE desktop is installed. The LXDE desktop does not come with a web browser, so if you require a web browser, you can run the app get install Firefox. Uh, a web browser is not necessary for this tutorial. The only piece of software I'm going to install is XRDP, which gives you the ability to remote into your server from a Windows computer using the remote desktop protocol or any other RDP application that you might install on a Linux server or on a Mac. So let's go ahead and install that. The first piece we'll need is Tight VNC Server. It works very well with XRDP. a few seconds to install. It needs to be in this order for XRDP to work properly. At least that's what I've come to uh, experience. And next will be XRDP. Now we're going to go ahead and reboot the server. There's a thing called guest add-ins in VirtualBox. If you work with virtualizations, uh, some call them tools, they call them guest add-ins in uh, VirtualBox. They're a necessity in order to uh, make your virtualization more stable. Better graphic drivers, as you can see it's very tiny right now, uh, very small, kind of hard to work with. We'll go, go, go ahead and install those uh, guest add-ins to give us a much better display. Go to Devices, Insert Guest Edition CD Image. Click OK. VBox Linux. Just double click on it. Execute in terminal. It'll just take a few seconds to run. That's it. Go ahead and restart the server again. Should come up with a much larger display. Easier to work with. Gives you more functionality if you want to go full screen. Makes it more stable. So when it comes to working with virtualization, these type of tools are a must. Much better. Let's log in again as root. This concludes this tutorial. The next tutorial will be setting up DNS and DHCP on the server. We'll set it up to where the DHCP gives out IP addresses on your network, and the devices that pick up the IP addresses will then register the host name within DNS. So I hope you watch my next tutorial and thank you for visiting thejonas.net and have a nice day.